So now we've got our material into our feeder house. Now what happens? Okay. So the feeder chain grabs that material and drags it up and then it transitions into a rotor. Okay. So for the purpose of this exercise, no Lexian owners, don't need to worry about hybrids or drum machines. Or oh, has anybody got a T-series John Deere? No? Cool. Why do, why do I not have to deal with that? It's a full width drum. The material comes up the feeder and goes into a full width drum. So cool, it just goes round through that concave, deals with it. So let's forget about those. Rotary machines, New Holland, two rotors, case John Deere, one rotor. At that transition point, we'll talk about single rotors first. What happens? Right, the in feed on our rotor, so the two manufacturers call them different things, right? So we'll just generically call it an in feed. Wipes around at the base of the feeder chain and actually grabs that material and brings it in through a transition cone. So that's the case terminology. John Deere call it something different, but it effectively does the same thing. Grabs the material, it changes direction from a big flat flow into a big circular flow. Where does the material go then? Enters the concave at the right hand front concave. Okay, so it goes up and around, moves back and drops in on the right hand front side and enters the concave. Okay. Then what happens? Okay, so let's think for a second what this thing is going to do. Commonly in serials, our rotor's running at 900 RPM. Yep. Around three and a half turns around the rotor and it is ejected. How long does that machine have to thrash and separate all the material you've just cut and gathered off 40 feet? You calculate it out in your head quickly. One-fifth of one second for it to go through the process of thrashing and separating and then it's gone. You've got a fifth of a second for this thing to do its job. So that's why it's so critically important that you get this bit right. Okay? None of these machines have enough separation area to really do what they're trying to do. You have a look and think about it and you go, I've got a, basically I've got 100, 120 degrees to 160 degrees of concave or separation area over a piece that's a couple of metres long. And I'm going to try and whack whatever I'm cutting off and separate it in that small area and in that small space of time. Okay? Right? So what does it do? It goes round over that concave three times. So it goes two times over the thrashing concave and effectively one and a half times it'll go through our separation area and then it's gone, it's ejected either by a beater or an internal chopper as the case is. Straw residue goes out the back and is chopped or, and spread. Okay, so we're happy with that in a fifth of a second. Yep, righto. Then what happens? All of the material that we have thrashed, hopefully we've thrashed it completely and what we get in our, uh, on our John Deere auger bed or on our front primary grain pan for the, for the case, what is that end going to do? We'll blast a whole heap of air through it and lift all of the light material, okay? And all of the heavier material goes and gets sorted by our sieves and breaks into two more streams. So we've now gone from one big crop flow into three separate streams. Two streams for our sieves are clean grain and tailings. Yep. Clean grain goes in the top. What's tailings or repeats? Yeah, so, but why do we, why do we need to put that through again? Yeah, okay. So if you open your tailings and there's clean grain in there and you ring me and say, I've got clean grain in my tailings, what am I going to tell you to do? Open your bottom sieve or slow your fan speed. But then I'm going to ask you what's in your grain tank and compare it. What, what the object of the exercise in this whole process is, use your tailings to tell you what your sieve is doing. 
Okay, so you do two things. You look at your grain loss and you look at your tailings and those two things are going to tell you what your sieve is doing. Okay. What do I need to do if I've got part thrashed heads or pieces or white heads in my tailings? Go forward. Rotor and concave. Well, it might be that or it might be that I'm going to make a change. Remember when I said all that material comes around and enters the right-hand front concave? Yep. What if I've got the wrong concave in the front? What if my first concave is too loose and I'm getting part thrashed heads fall straight through that first concave before they go through our thrash? Because remember what it's doing is I've got, I've got a, a transition. I've got the material coming in, getting closer and closer through a pinch point at some point in that rotor and concave and then as it opens out, that's when I separate. So when it's all getting squeezed in, theoretically no grain should be separating, but I can squeeze heads out through the concave. How do I know that this is what's going on? I've got to stall the machine and get inside and have a look. Look, some people hate stalling machines, and I think it's, I think it's probably the hardest thing to master, and it's the hardest thing to get right, but I tell you what, it tells you an awful lot about what's going on in your header. But you've got to stop it clean. You can actually physically see where the material lands. You can actually physically then read what your header is doing inside. And then that gives you the ability to make the little adjustment that you need to do. Okay. Jump in there, yep, mate. jump in, Cass. When we're harvesting, we can look in the tank and see what's in the tank. So that's a good example. Yep, that is what we've got. We can have a look at the back of the machine, see what's getting chucked out on the ground. But once we open up that tailings door, that is the answer what's going on into the guts of the machine. So we can see whether there's unfreshed heads, we can see whether there's cracked grain, we can see whether there's nothing in there. So we are aiming for nothing. That's what we're aiming for. To get to nothing is almost impossible to get. Um, but that's, that's where we want to go to, is to have nothing in our, in our tailings anymore. When we do, you know, I've harvested lupins before with the door open, or small beans with the door open, because nothing goes into the tailings, so we're doing a good enough job on the machine. Um, so, tailings very important to have a look at it. Um, when you're harvesting, you can open up your tailings door and just go and harvest for 100 metres, and jump out of the machine and go and have a look what's on your tailings. Um, Brett said before about the stall stop, people love it, other people hate it. I'm one of them that hates the bloody thing. Um, I think it gives you a false reading. Once you flick that machine out of gear, everything goes slower, your rotor goes slower, your fan goes slower, your sh shaker system goes slower, and the momentum that the material has got, you lift that material up in the machine so you keep it suspended all the time. So once you flick all the, all the running gear out of gear, out of gear, out of drive, everything will fall down. So it's just the auger that corkscrews everything out to the back. So just keep that in mind. When you do do a stall stop, I do stall stops to have a look at what's going on in the machine. Um, but don't take that as 100%. This is what we need to do. So you've got to use your imagination a little bit to see how the flow is going through the machine. Do the stall, stall stop and make adjustments and do another one and see what happens. Key thing is, You've got to stop it clean. Yes. You've got to stall it. And that can be hard. You guys will be okay. You've got biomass, you've got a big crop. You go and whack your ground speed forward, pull your throttle back to zero and jump on the brakes. Generally, they'll stop. And that's, and that's the hard thing. Because you've got to do those three things in a second or so. And the last thing you do is turn the key off. So you should be able to stop it. So the object of what we're talking about with our crop flow is understanding where the material goes and what we're looking at and trying to read, the, the reason why we're trying to read what's in our tailings and always go back to our rotor and concave setup to answer those questions is you can't, you can't fix it at the back. What it is is it's a band-aid. And my favourite thing about band-aids is what happens when you have a shower? It falls off. So what happens when the conditions change? The band-aid you've just put on falls off. Okay? And that, that's the problem with doing that. Okay. Um, on, a, on a red flagship header, where does your tailings go? Come on, red header owners. 
Our repeat elevator carries it up through a reprocessing process, which is a series of paddles, and then it throws it up and hits a deflector and it drops it on the right-hand side of your sieve. Okay? So what happens if you've got high tailings load? goes round and round and round and round until it gets to 110% and it blocks your tailings elevator. Okay? That's something that's quite common. We don't understand why, not, not work out why, and our tailings goes up. But also what happens is we end up with a whole bunch of cracked grain and a whole bunch of other things. So we go, oh, hang on a minute, I've got cracked grain, so I need to open my concave, and then I end up with a whole bunch of whiteheads, but I've still got cracked grain, and I can't work out what's going on. And what, what we've actually done is we've artificially ruined our whole machine. And it's because we've been running a high level of tailings and our tailings reprocessor is turning good grain into rubbish. Okay? Does that sort of make sense? So reading and understanding it. Um, we need to fix the, the, the source of the problem. That's where we need to fix it. So if we open up our tailings and we see those dramas in the tailings and we need to fix that, Sometimes we'll boost the fan speed up or boost the rotor speed up or whatever we need to do to, to make it happen. Adjust the top or bottom sieve. Um, the problem could be at the front of the machine where the, where the concaves are and where the rotor is. So we need to go and fix that. So the story that I'm telling everyone is it's like having a flat tire on the header. So you get there in the morning and the tire is flat. You pump it up, it's fine. You can work for the day. Tomorrow morning it will be flat again. So you pump it up, you can work for the day, everything is fine. But that flat tire is going to go flat until you stop and take it off and fix it and put it back on. And then it's not going to be flat anymore, so then you can use it. Um, it's the same with a machine. You can try to put the plaster on it, you can try to fix it for, for the day, but in the end, to fix the problem properly, you need to go and make large changes, whether it's changing a concave or doing something with your rotor speed or doing something with your rotor blocks. Um, yeah, so fix the problem first before we go and put a blast on it. Anyone got any, any questions, uh, it can be specific to your machine, about actual material flow in the machine? Cassie and I will get straight on to specifics about, you know, the, the things that we know that work to help improve capacity and the things that we know that work help reduce engine loads and the things that we know that work to improve your productivity. Okay? and we'll give you some ideas, but everyone happy with crop flow? Where it actually goes, what it actually does, and how it's dealt with inside the machine? Brett, you mentioned that the red ones tend to put the tailings on the right-hand side of the sieves. Yes. Are the John Deere's the same? Uh, yep, John Deere comes from yep. the left-hand side on the auger, so it, go, it gathers it on the left-hand side and takes it over, um, sorry, on the right-hand side and gathers it over to the left, towards the left. Yep, so it's, if you do the stall stop, it will go, everything will go to the left. And you look at it and you think, what the hell's going on here? So everything will sit on the left. Um, but while the machine is running, it's trying to distribute it over the top, so the whole area from left to right. And I think the case has just spread it on the right hand side. Doesn't it? So the case one has a paddle and then a little deflector. And it, and it only ever goes on the right hand side. Yeah. But your John Deere one has got an auger in there and it's got like an auger trough that gradually gets wider. Yep, it's got um, holes at the bottom of it. Yep. What about something like a, um, your gleaners? Uh... Uh, so the gleaner is a way different beast. Um, so the, the gleaner creates or produces much more wind than anything else. So they don't have a variable fan speed um, and they have a set of feed accelerator rollers uh, their repeats go back into the infeed for the drum, for the rotor itself. Okay, so they go back into that feed stream. Um, all of the clean grain, or, or all the separated grain and mog, material other than grain that comes out of your rotor cage, drops down through a feed accelerator roller or a pair of rollers, and it, it throws the grain into, um, into, onto the sieve, basically but it has a very, very high volume air blast that goes through that accelerated grain stream and pretty much blows all of the lighter material straight out the back of the machine. So, yeah, they're a, they're a way different beast. 
Um, their fan runs flat out, but you do have shutters where you can actually direct airflow and control the amount of airflow that goes through the sieves and how much of that airflow is in that direct stream. Um, yeah, they take, they take a bit more, a little bit more thinking about. Very, very high capacity machine, but lots of stuff that's spinning really fast. Like those feed accelerator rollers, um, the grain accelerator rollers are doing like four and a half thousand RPM. So, yeah. Not a different beast. A different beast. It's, what about something like a class? Um, so your, your Lexian, uh, its tailings go, goes up and the Lexian's actually really cool. You sit in the operator's seat and you look out the little window down there and you can actually see the, the repeats or the tailings auger and you can actually look in the auger trough while you're sitting in the driver's seat. Okay? So you can see exactly what goes in and it drops right in the centre of the, of the drum, the main threshing drum at the top. So that's where it goes back. So, and then understanding what, what happens inside Alexian. So, so your T-series John Deere has got straw walkers, big wide drum, crop material gets thrown up onto the walkers, straw goes out the back, the walkers walk the grain forward and onto the grain pan. The Lexian has a chevron beater, a bit like um, the feed accelerator at the top of a New Holland feeder house, or as it goes into the rotors. And that chevron beater divides it into two crop flows. And then you've got a pair of rotors that um, separation only in Alexian. And those rotors are about 14 feet long. They're huge. Um, and because it's a specialist small grain harvester, that's what it's designed to do. Okay. They separate pretty well. But clear division. There's a grain pan underneath their rotors that carries all of the grain forward. Um, and then they have a, uh, a, a bit like the gleaner and a bit like all of these other harvesters, they have um, three airflows. So they have a dedicated airflow for that first blast between the pre-sieve and the main sieve area. And then they have a dedicated airflow that goes between the top and bottom sieve and a dedicated airflow underneath the sieve. And you've got little shutters that you adjust to um, set your airflows for the three sieves. But they, um, Lexians run a fairly high fan speed. So normally in, in canola, you'll run around 1,000 RPM fan speed. If you did that with a case or a John Deere, you'd blow your canola straight out the back. So, but big sieve area. Any yeah. other questions around flow and crop flow? Because I think what we're trying to really get you guys to understand and why we're standing in here is we've got to get it in the front we don't get it in the front, no matter what we're doing, crop, whether we're looking at wheat seed and everything else, is, we can't get it there. The next is to understand as the guys are going, how the flow works and what we're trying to do with that material. Does that make sense? What we're trying to do today isn't what the machine was originally designed to do. So, you know, we, in West Australia, we call it a header. We call it a header for one reason. You used to cut the head off on about, you know, two inches of straw. Now we, it's a stubble mulcher and it's a weed seed harvester and it's a, you know, it's a paddock prepper, preparer and, um, you know, all this sort of other stuff, so. A little bit of grain gathering. A little bit of grain gathering in amongst that, yes.